There's one of those interesting times where we got uh, two talks actually, uh, two talks in, uh, in one hour. But uh, this next talk, we were like, I remember, I remember reviewing the CFPs, like, this is a talk that we really want to bring in. Uh, it's something that is actually not discussed, uh, discussed often enough. And uh, Megan Rohde is here. Is it Rohde? Roddy. 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 So Megan is going to be uh, talking about neurodiversity uh, in SecOp teams. Uh, and uh, this is, you know, one of the things that's the nice thing about the Packet Hacking Village is we can have many different conversations. Um, you know, it doesn't have to align with any of the track, uh, any certain tracks, but um, it's something that's, you know, these are the issues that we have need deeper conversations with. And it is now my pleasure to introduce you all, Megan Roddy. Thank you. So as Ming said, I'm going to be talking about how to strengthen your uh, SecOps team by welcoming neurodiversity into the mix. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about um, my experience over the past year working in SecOps with Asperger's Syndrome and um, how I benefit my team uh, through the, the special brain chemistry I have with high-functioning autism um, and also how my managers work with me um, and certain difficulties I face in my day-to-day. So today I'm going to talk about a group of people who are highly productive, have extreme attention to detail, are logical, calculated, passionate about the work they do, and are hyper-focused, which are all skills that uh, come greatly uh, as a great asset to PsychOps teams. This group of people are high-functioning autistics. So right now, there's a lack of uh, neurodiversity and high-functioning autistics um, in the general workforce, not even specifically SecOps or IT. Uh, research has found that only 15% of people with autism in the UK are employed full-time. Uh, there's no stats for the USA yet. I'm guessing it's similar. But um, th in reality, a lot of these people could be working. They just haven't been given the chance. Um, and they should because they can add valuable skills to your teams. So then we ask why. Why are these individuals not working when they could be really succeeding in certain fields? And so to begin with, uh, due to social disabilities, these individuals often do not uh, interview well due to lack of social skills, communication skills. And so that's a quick cutoff for them when they're interviewing. There's also a stigma surrounding autism, and uh, typically it, interviewers or anyone who, when you think about autism, you're thinking about the disabilities and difficulties of those individuals, and it's very rarely talked about the uh, abilities that come with having a different mindset um, and being able to work with that. And my last point that I think is why we're often overlooked is because we behave uniquely. So some of the things that I do that would often turn people away from considering me for a job or uh, being a friend even, I typically talk very loudly. Um, I am often told to use my indoor voice like a five-year-old. So that's one thing I realize I, I understand I do it in general, but I don't often realize I'm doing it until somebody tells me to be quiet, and often they just think I'm annoying. It's really something to do with my brain chemistry that I don't understand. Secondly, I tend to be very blunt with people, and so I often say things that easily offend um, or annoy people because I don't think about what I'm saying, or I do think about it, and just my brain's saying, oh yeah, that's totally cool to say. I mean, it's the truth, uh, and obviously a lot of times people don't want to hear the truth, so uh, I do tend to offend or annoy people on accident. Lastly, we, there tends to be things that we struggle with that a normal 20-year-old adult should be able to do, but I can't. So, I mean, I had a mathematics degree before I even had a driver's license, and I still struggle to drive. So I limit my driving, and then other things, car problems, AC problems, I don't handle them well. Uh, so I find it hard to be an adult despite having almost two degrees now. But 
having said all this, there is evidence of certain companies and organizations that are working hard to bring these individuals into their workforce. For example, many tech companies are uh, discovering that autistic individuals, their mindset uh, provides valuable resources to their team. SAP, for example, has an autism of work uh, program and is working to get their workforce up to 1% um, autistic by 2020 because they found that these individuals do great with quality assurance reviews and their attention to detail allows them to review software and work on application development. And this is the same across the board for Microsoft, New Relic, HP. They all have programs specifically focused on um, hiring uh, autistic individuals to work in their companies. Secondly, we have the Israeli army. Uh, everyone knows the Israeli army is a pretty strong military force, a very admired military force. And they have dedicated a whole division called the Visual Intelligence Division to uh, work with high-functioning autistic individuals who were previously turned away from military duty. They found that a lot of these individuals were high-functioning enough to want to work, it, because every Israeli uh, adult, when they turn 18, serves in military forces, and they found that these high-functioning autistic individuals who could do the work were getting disappointed that they were turned away. So they created the Visual Intelligence Division where these individuals sit in screens all day looking for slight differences in satellite images that may indicate uh, enemy movement, uh, explosives, or anything like that. So they found they're good at hyper-focus, high attention to detail, seeing those differences over long periods of time. And even further, what really shows how this is working out is a lot of these individuals are now move, being moved into the general population of the military because the commanders are, and leaders are now learning how to work with these individuals and realizing there's not really much difference if we move them into the general population. And lastly, uh, my, me working for the past year at the Texas Department of Public Safety, which has led me here, I believe is proof that this really can work. Uh, so I was great in academia. I did four years, got my math degree at 18. I am currently working on my master's degree. Uh, should get it by the time I'm 21. And I, I actually had never even touched cybersecurity until one year ago, decided to jump in on an internship. I didn't really know what was it, it was about, but I didn't have anything better to do with my summer. And now a year from now, I'm speaking at DEF CON about my work in cybersecurity. So I think that's pretty good evidence that it worked out okay for me. So I listed a few things that make me difficult to work with. So now I'm gonna tell you um, how you can work with these individuals uh, despite their disabilities. So the first thing is awareness. Um, both the coworkers and the managers need to uh, understand that these individuals, though they may have challenges associated with their condition, that they, they bring benefits and that's why they should be hired. Uh, so you will need to adapt to the employee because their brain does work differently, but that shouldn't scare you. It's not a bad thing and uh, I'll, as I'll show you in a few minutes, there's not much difference, but there's some. And so like any other disability or ethnic difference or gender difference, don't let it be a uh, weight on your decision to hire an employee. So like I said, uh, neurodiverse individuals, especially those with autism, have a very different brain chemistry. And so you can't manage them the way that you'd manage all your other employees because everything you say to them and every way you interact with them is going to be taken a lot differently than would with a uh, neurotypical employee. So I'm going to start off with some examples. First example is maybe an employee, they, an, a high functioning or a regular employee, They've got this great idea for a project they want to work on, a plan they want to implement. They bring it to you, and you, you don't have the bandwidth for new projects at the time. So with a neurotypical employee, you'd say, sorry, we don't have the time. Let's bring it back up when, it's, when we're less busy. However, with an HFA employee, you want to be more specific and say, bring it up to me again in two weeks or two months or two years. It doesn't really matter what amount of time, 
but um, the term less busy is very difficult for a high functioning autistic to interpret because it, it's very vague and it's very subjective, the term less busy. While some people can easily handle subjective concepts, we can't. So something like two weeks makes it very set in. And so this comes from experience as I've heard the term when we're less busy and I start worrying about, well, if I bring it up in two weeks, is that too soon? And now they're mad because I'm bugging with them, something that I brought up two weeks ago, stuff like that. And so having it, uh, and also when, when the, I then get frustrated and act out and be like, well, why aren't my projects being considered, blah, blah, blah. And so then I'm seen as selfish and um, impatient, whereas really I just need something more solid. When you tell me bring up in two weeks, I mark it on my calendar and done is gone for two weeks. So being less vague, more direct. So like I said, a couple changes of words instead of saying less busy, say two weeks, and you've made a huge improvement in that employee's work experience. Second scenario is uh, every analyst usually has a series of projects, a series of tasks in their day-to-day -day capabilities, day-to-day uh, -day tasks. And so you assign these to an employee, and with a neurotypical employee, all you need to do is hand them the stuff and say this is what you're currently working on. The difficulty with neuro uh, HFA employees is you need to also help them identify priorities. And I'm not telling them everything you hand them, give them a one, two, three, four. What this means is that you teach them to learn how to prioritize their work. Because though we can work with a long list of jobs, I'm not gonna understand what, what is on high priority for the organization. Again, it's more of a subjective or conditional type thing. It's not it, me knowing right away. So that's a kind of thing to uh, help them learn how to identify importance based on the work they're given. So, so the common theme among these things is these individuals need structure, routine, when they can, clarity, don't use vague terms, and then the biggest thing of all of those is patience and understanding. Um, I probably piss off my managers more than they'd like. Uh, I say a lot of things I shouldn't, I do a lot of things I shouldn't, and luckily there they've learned that that is due to my slightly messed up brain, and they've been very patient and understanding with that. But they keep me around for some reason, and I figured out it's because even though I am by far not the smartest person in our office, I have the least experience, probably the least uh, technical knowledge of cybersecurity, but I bring productivity and efficiency. Even though I'm not the smartest, I can typically crank out work at four times the speed of any other individual. I also am very thorough with my work. I have extreme attention to detail, um, so I get to do, get to do, so the stuff isn't as fun, but I do very well at uh, things like requisition orders when we need stuff, writing policies and procedures, um, writing different documentation for our office because I can be very thorough with it. And then also a dedicated and passionate employee, which, um, is very important across any careers. You wanna have a passionate employee, not someone who's just there because it's a job. So just to go a bit deeper, like I said, be as specific as possible. But as time progresses, also teach the employees how to enable themselves. I also don't want people to just tell me what to do every time. I wanna learn how I can interpret what you're saying myself instead of constantly having to have someone hold my hand. I don't love having someone hold my hand. I sometimes need it, but I also wanna learn how to enable myself. And also individuals with HFA, typically when they show interest in something, they become slightly obsessed uh, I had this issue many times in my childhood where I enjoyed something and then became obsessed and then spent every afternoon out of school focusing on that thing. However, when you're employing an adult with this characteristic, it's the perfect opportunity. I suggest what you do is with these individuals, you identify um, 
a topic, if you see them getting really interested in network forensics, encourage them and help them find resources to learn more because they will dig in in their evenings after work and read all they can and become an expert on that topic and be completely happy doing it. You're not forcing them to do it. They love it. So um, that's one of the things I do suggest is you, you pay attention to what they're interested in and help them gain the skills in that area because they'll want to. And lastly, I think this is one of the most important, at least to me, is you need to be a mentor. Um, so one of the things I found most helpful is every few months getting together with my manager, 30 minutes at lunchtime, and just discussing what, where I need to improve. And so it takes a little time out of your day, but it's probably, I would say it's worth it for the manager. Um, like I said, that's probably one of the most helpful things I've had um, throughout throughout the past year is every few months just sitting down 30 minutes because a lot of the time the things I do that are quirky or strange or inappropriate I don't realize I'm doing it and so to have someone sit down one-on-one -on -one very and just be honest and say okay you need to stop doing this you need to improve in this area it's it's definitely very helpful for me and some I improve in those areas uh, usually I've seen that when I come back again and spend another 30 minutes uh, I've ticked off the things on the list from last time, so. So I want to thank you all for attending my talk. I know it wasn't the technical talk that are being given in most rooms, but I hope it was some insight into an often not spoken about area, and I'd like you all to uh, definitely consider uh, integrating the HFA community into your uh, workplace more.